Hi, welcome to Talking Tech. I'm your host, Marcus Yam, and today we've got some really exciting news about gaming in small form factors. Now, first of all, the hot topic that goes along with all this is the Intel 12th gen Intel Core processor. That's codenamed Alder Lake, very cool new CPU with up to eight P cores and eight E cores and new performance hybrid architecture. Very cool, check out some of our videos when we get deeper into that. But today, we're talking about NUC, and joining me is Justin Whitney. Justin, thanks for joining me. Tell me what you do at Intel. Yeah, I would be happy to. Um, I'm our enthusiast market segment lead for the NUC group. Okay, so as I teased, 12th gen and NUC. We've got some news to share today? I do, however, I think maybe we need to take it back a little bit. Um, maybe not everyone's familiar with what a NUC is. So, you know, and, and you may not be aware that this is our 10th anniversary this year. Oh, wow, 10 so years. So 10 years of, of really, you know, innovative NUC products, you know, looking at our traditional four by four form factor here, which has been great for, you know, base compute, digital signage, that sort of thing, right? And over the years, we had customers start to ask for even higher levels of performance. Gaming. And, well, before we even got okay. there, all right. All right, all right. they were yeah. asking for more I.O. Um, so, you know, like going back to Skull Canyon, that product line, we added higher performance at the processor level, but we added a lot of ports. And as soon as we did that, they're like, sure, if you can stretch it that much, why don't you put discrete graphics in there? Yeah. So, yeah, we upped the ante. Um, this is our 11th gen product, but you know, that one we put discrete graphics soldered down onto the motherboard and you know, really try to keep the, the, the form factor as small as possible, but really bump up the performance levels for gaming, as you mentioned. Okay, so discrete graphics, super important for gamers. Um, I, think, I think the next level would be, uh, you, know, you, you mentioned soldered graphics, what about discrete graphics that are add-in cards. Yeah, really good point, right? I mean, the, as soon as you start innovating and pushing the envelope, people just want more and more. Yeah. And you know, with the, the, the whole premise of trying to keep things small, but how do you get this level of performance into that kind of form factor? And that's what we're excited to talk about today. All right, discrete graphics. Okay, so to bring it all together, um, there is a new NUC product that goes along with our Intel 12th gen processors. Uh, first, what is it called? What's the official name? And of course, I love all the code names from NUC Group, so you have to do the reveal of what's, okay. what's the code so name. Okay, so officially, uh, Intel NUC 12 Extreme. Okay, NUC 12 Extreme. All right, to go along with Intel 12th gen. I love it. Exactly, okay. we try to follow that each time, right? And then from a, a code name perspective, you probably remember our 11th gen one. I think you did a great piece on that. It was a beast. Yeah, Beast Canyon. Beast Canyon. So if we're gonna put even more performance into that, you know, that product line, uh, we had to make it even bigger and badder and bolder, right? So Dragon Canyon. Okay, Dragon Canyon. All right, so I want, I want to see it. I want to see everything up from how you put discrete graphics into a small form factor NUC for gaming. Um, yeah, can you, can you take me through some of the new innovations, what it looks like? I want to see it. Yeah, we'd be happy to walk through it, and I have just the guy to help us. Okay, let's take, take a look. look. All right, yeah. great. Let's, let's go. go. Hey, Ray. Hey, how's it going? Good, good. Thanks for joining us today. Um, for the people who don't know you, what do you do at Intel? I'm a senior technical marketing engineer of the enthusiast product line uh, of Nux. Cool. So the the big thing we have to share today is Dragon Canyon uh, with Intel 12th Gen Core processors. The first thing you're going to notice, it's a lot bigger than the ones uh, than the Nux that Justin just showed me. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the reason for the size increase, um, as you guys were talking about discrete graphics, is figuring out a way to stuff something like this into a box that also has a uh, full-size CPU as, as well as you know, support for many of the uh, technologies and then figuring out how to cool it. Um, use, utilizing three fans on the top of the system that- uh, Let's take a look inside. Yeah. Uh, you don't mind me pulling this off. Absolutely. Yeah, let's walk us through uh, so, yeah. what it looks like on the inside. So yeah, we basically have a uh, very quick open top uh, solution. These three fans are 92 millimeters. They basically pull air through the, the two side panels front and back. Um, and then we also have a, what we call an air guide that pulls air, uh, exhaust air from the rear of the system and allows the CPU to get nice cool air instead of pulling air directly from a, a nice hot graphics card. Um, this is basically uh, allows for a full size or full length rather 
uh, dual slot graphics card and the power supply is able to power uh, many of the top end cards that exist in the market today. So with such tight integration here, um, I know you mentioned a little bit, a little bit about like a lot about airflow. Um, but for those who are wondering, is, is that a concern? You have a lot of really powerful components in here. Um, is, is heat ever a concern for people? Uh, so Intel Silicon is actually very tolerant of heat. So even though we have a 65 watt CPU that can power limit up way higher than that, up to around the 220 watt range, Intel Silicon is very graceful in throttling itself down when it needs to. And the amount of cooling that we have uh, here allows for the components that we add into the system to uh, regulate themselves pretty well. Okay, great. And I think what's maybe really important to get into now, I mean, we've talked about graphics, let's talk about the, the heart of the dragon. And really, how, how do you get a, a socketed desktop processor and a motherboard into that kind of form factor. So this is you know, kind of introducing that, that element right. product line, right? This is the, the element, and this is not the first time that it's been in a NUC product, but there's some refinements here. But for those who aren't familiar with having an element inside a PC, maybe a PC and a PC, yeah. can you tell me a little bit more? Why don't we dive into that a little sure. bit then? And Our reason we call it an element ar architecture is that we kind of separate some of the key components of the system. Uh, what's not pictured here is the power supply because it would just be in kind of an unruly size to, to show, but we separate the CPU board, which will carry the CPU, multiple M.2 slots, as well as system memory slots. Um, for this, we're utilizing DDR4 up to 3200 and in with support for XMP profiles. And then when it breaks down to the baseboard, the NUC element actually slots into this baseboard that then transfers the PCI Express Gen 5 uh, signaling to allow for integration with a uh, full, full length graphics card. I wanna back up just for a second here because I noticed that is a desktop class Alder Lake S processor. And in the NUCs that have had in the past, even with the Element, we're using H-series mobile processors. So is this, is this a first? for NUC to have a desktop CPU in there? Yeah, this is actually the first for uh, the entire NUC product line to utilize a socketed CPU, uh, and specifically of the desktop range. Uh, we're not using a low power CPU, we're using what's traditionally uh, considered like the, the mid-grade uh, for power limits. We're not using an unlocked or overclockable CPU here just because of power and thermals, uh, the limits that, that are imposed because of that but it still turbos up to the five gigahertz range. It still has the eight cores, uh, you know, the full premium uh, performance cores and the eight hybrid cores or the rather the efficiency cores. Uh, they do work together. Windows 11 support uh, with the thread director does a great job of optimizing gaming, those kinds of things. Um, the main reason we went with the desktop silicon this time around is we wanted to be able to maintain that really robust IO that we have. Uh, six USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, uh, more than most mini ITX boards, still having Thunderbolt, still having three M.2 slots, which again, not, not seen in uh, even some of the desktop boards that are available won't have as many as three. So we wanted to provide a very awesome and fully integratable solution for people that want to have all those kinds of things. All, you know, max amount of RAM for two slots, max amount of M.2s, uh, all of them are Gen 4 as well. So yeah, we. We wanted to provide something awesome, and Socket was the path to do that. So, getting getting a motherboard <clears throat> down to something this small, how do you how do you keep that cool? Uh, so, we're utilizing a uh, vapor chamber solution. We had done this on the previous two Element products. This one's quite a bit larger, as you can see, because the CPU is quite a bit larger than most mobile CPUs are about as big as your you know a pinky finger in terms of thermal uh, capacity. Utilizing this, the IHS and the vapor chamber, which then we uh, beefed up the size of the fan, just allows it to cool it a lot better. And it's not shown here, but on the underside of this uh, vapor chamber is actually the power delivery heatsink that goes across that, uh, that array of uh, MOSFETs. So it keeps the power delivery cool at the same time. So going back to cooling, I noticed that a jump from actually Ghost Canyon to this generation of eight liter NUC is there's a fan shroud in the back connected right to the element. How much does that increase cooling performance? So what the shroud actually does is it provides an open air uh, intake for the CPU. And it, what we've seen in testing and the reason we added it is 
it reduces the thermal load on the CPU by between five and 10 degrees Celsius. So it's a pretty noticeable amount when you're talking about long-term uh, testing. So long gaming sessions, things like that, where the CPU just gradually creeps up in temperature, providing it that direct air path to the uh, external air is just, it's a monumental difference in, uh, in our thermal testing. And what about noise? That's always a consideration for some. So we shoot for 3.5 bells. If you were to try and convert that in directional decibels, you'd be about 45 decibels at uh, nominal load. At max load, we shoot for below 4.5 bells, which is again, somewhere between 45 and 50 decibels. So in theory, this would actually make a pretty good home theater PC or the best home theater PC out there. Uh, certainly in terms of the, the, you know, the system load for home theater usages, uh, the fans may not even be running for most of the time because they do have a fan off profile. So below CPU goes below about 50 C, the fans actually shut off. I'm glad you brought that up too, because there's a couple other features we need to talk about. Sure. Um, yeah, it, it, in terms of like home theater PC or even, you know, your gaming, your gaming rig set up as that personalization. If you buy this big TV and TVs now have a variable refresh rate, I just think it just makes sense to put a gaming PC next to your big home theater setup. You could do it and you may want to give it your own look and feel. So I don't know if you noticed, yeah, we've got this front panel um, RGB backlit logo. Right. Uh, we've, we've customized one. Uh, we've got, you know, several different options here. We ship with our default skull logo. Uh, but we've got a couple other examples you know, that you know, we've customized specifically either for uh, you know, a partner or an OEM that's gonna build their own or you know, get to the end user level and allow them to kind of make the, you know, the look and feel that they're going after. Well, this is something that anyone can do. They can just order this, make it yourself, DIY, and it's user replaceable, user customizable, that's right. that sort of thing. Now, I think that's important, right? Because the skull has been such a, a key, key trademark, key look of the NUC, and I know that you know, it'd be a shame just to have it hidden on the element on the inside, but uh, you can really put whatever you want on the outside, right? Yeah, and if, you know, if we, if we you know, kind of pivot from the DIY end user and that personalization into maybe an OEM partner, um, and them wanting to customize for their own logo, that also brings in kind of the, the final point, and that's, okay, we, we've got it all exploded like this, but what does it really take for them to put it together in terms of ease of integration? And you know, does it help their assembly line processes? So maybe we can take a look at that. All right, wow, that was a lot of information very quickly about uh, NUC 12 Extreme Dragon Canyon. Uh, clearly, I'm a big fan of the 12th gen Intel core processor, codenamed Alder Lake, and I love gaming and the small form factor. So. Dragon Canyon sounds like just the, the perfect ticket looking for whether it's a mini gaming PC or home theater PC. So guys, I wanna thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Justin. Thanks, Ray. Thanks for having us in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.